Dead Island 2 is exactly what I expected and that's a good and a bad thing. I now finished the main story, did most of the side content and I'm still enjoying my time in LA. But I also think that you can skip this game and not miss a lot. And that is mostly because of the story that is serviceable. Just an excuse for you to go through the separate and relatively open spaces. Without spoiling too much, you get bitten at the start of the game and then turn out to be immune while others around you start turning. So we get in contact with a doctor who says that with your help he can make a vaccine. So we go and look for him. Of course, things don't go as planned, and that's kind of the story. Like, the highlights are totally some of the characters you meet. I enjoy the focus on celebrities and how they are trying to survive in this harsh new reality while they're still featured on posters that are shown throughout most of LA. It's some pretty cool, unwritten world building, which I like. The best side missions are also with these famous stereotypes like the wasted rockstar, retired actor or the over-the-top influencer. You will easily encounter them if you're open to distractions during the main story. And when you decide to help these characters, they will join you in the safe house close by and have more missions for you that can lead to some pretty cool rewards that make it worthwhile. But there are also many other side quests that you can find in these safe houses or in other parts of the map that are just hard to pay attention to. Like, I played a lot of this game with a podcast in the background and some music on because apart from some main story cutscenes, I could not really care for what everyone was saying and the presentation is really boring as well. You okay? You can be honest with me. I'm Burt Michaels, the chief lifeguard of this strip. It's kind of my responsibility to keep people like you safe. But luckily, Dead Island 2 makes up for that with two things that I think it does really well. The combat and the amazing looking locations. I want to start with the latter because damn, this game is pretty. I'm playing on PS5, 60 FPS and... Yeah, jaw-dropping. It's really, really cool. And I think this is partly because of the less open nature compared to the previous Dead Island titles. Like, the main story will take you in a linear fashion through the 10 different locations, so you're easily surrounded by new scenery every hour from the sunny Beverly Hills to the less pleasant sewers of LA. With highlights including Vanish Beach that is perfectly recreated with cool new outbreak related uses for familiar landmarks. The Santa Monica Pier during night with the neon lights is an incredible sight. Just like the film studios where you have to go through a couple of different decors that give the game a completely new and less modern vibe. But also the villas in the Bel Air area have some of the most interesting indoor areas I've experienced in recent memory. They all have a distinct look with a ton of details, with the streamer house totally being my favorite. Like I now also want an indoor bowling area, my new unreachable goal in life. And by the way, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. And leave a like if you liked the video so far and subscribe because I got way more Dead Island 2 spoiler free tips and tricks and other videos coming your way. So Yes, the beautiful environments are one of the highlights as they give this amazing contrast versus the dire state the world is in, as all these great looking spaces are of course filled with zombies that will not hesitate to attack. And I love how the clothes and the overall look of the infected fit the location they are in, making the world feel more alive even though it's filled with undead. And I think the developers do a decent job at keeping the encounters fresh by constantly introducing new archetypes. You first encounter the so-called Apex variant in a boss fight after which they spawn in the world as well. So then even early game locations will become more dangerous over time and making sure that there's always a challenge when you come back for missions and other content you missed. I've now killed more than 3000 zombies including tens of these special variants so at one point you will have seen a lot of them and they will not surprise you anymore but during the main story the variety is decent enough to keep it interesting. Although it's mostly the combat itself that makes slashing these zombies entertaining even after having finished almost all the content in the game. It namely never gets old to launch enemies backwards with a charged attack from the hammer or cut off the limbs with a katana. The so-called flash system works really great and adds some nice depth as well as I found that cutting off legs makes many enemies less of an issue as they lose their mobility while you will need more strikes to rip off their head. You unlock guns midway through the game and I like how they add an extra twist because here of course you want to focus on the headshots for the most damage but you will mostly be saving these firearms for tough situations as you will not have enough ammo to only use these items. Like there's a great selection 
of melee weapons, but there are also quite a lot of different guns that you can pick up or buy with some special legendary variants that unlock after finishing the main quest. But I also used the curveballs a lot, from detonating a grenadier zombie with my shuriken to blowing up a whole group with my grenade. And I love how these are on a cooldown, so you always keep them after finding them once, you just have to wait a bit before you can throw them again. The skill cards also add a fun twist to the familiar skill trees that we see in many other games. Now you have to make way more choices. So do I dodge or block because you can only pick one and it both completely changes the combat flow. I was always interested in new skills after I unlocked them because that's the first time you actually see them and these new abilities and small upgrades can really help you out in the sometimes challenging encounters. There's only one difficulty in Dead Island 2 like you cannot choose but it does feel really balanced and you're often pushed to use all your tools in order to be successful. And the durability adds to this as well like you won't lose weapons when they break but if you're not near a work bench you also cannot repair those weapons so then you're forced to switch to other items in your arsenal and that keeps things fresh as well oh and the flying kick just never gets old like every night i'm excited to boot up the game again and see more of the side content that i haven't done yet and hopefully get some powerful new weapons to take out the zombies with although i wish they would have gone a bit more over the top with the arsenal like there are totally some mods that make the weapons look a bit cooler and it gives some nice gameplay advantages Plus I like how the game showers you with resources so you never really feel limited and are actually pushed to use the workbench. And since the game doesn't take itself too seriously I wish we saw that more in the combat as well. Like there are some nice passive bonuses or elemental effects but overall there could have been way more room for creativity. To really add that extra layer to the combat especially near the end of the game when you've used every weapon type a few times and they all basically do the same. The game is also surprisingly short. Short. It can take you 8 hours or so to go through the main story or even less if you solely focus on doing the main missions. I'm now at 13 hours and have done almost all the side quests in the game. Although I still have quite a few lost and found missions left which are basically side missions without any dialogue and a lack of directions. This can be fun if you're into this sort of treasure hunt but the hints are not always that great. So I was running around looking for the next objective a little longer than I wanted. Also mission markers for any type of activity can be wonky like they just stay on a door that you have to open while you are tasked to search for the key for that door or when they cover a large space the marker will still be visible in the world so you obviously want to focus on that location while that is just the middle point of that space and not where you have to look. To be fair though these things did not bother me that much and these are also the only annoyances I encountered. Like the game is really polished, everything worked for me, I had no bugs or progression issues, crashes etc. So the delay from February to April worked its wonders. But I really think it's up to you to decide if what you hear here is worth the full price to you. I think it's safer to wait till it's like half off then I can either easily recommend it unless you are like a huge zombie fan and like the idea of a beautiful LA to go through. Like I will totally be jumping back for DLC and post launch content. I look forward to seeing like brand new locations but I also know that if I completely skipped Dead Island 2 I would not have missed out. If you decide to jump in day one though there will be spoiler free tips and tricks and streams here around launch on the channel so subscribe to not miss that. A like on the video would really help me out and check out that other Dead Island 2 video by clicking on the screen. I will speak to you soon. Goodbye.